Right, lads, welcome back to the channel. My last video on our tech, our top tier tech tree guard did quite well. So today we're covering the Germans. These top tier tech tree reviews kind of focus on vehicles 9.3 and above, basically rank 6 and 7. But we might take a look at some 8.7s as well. So we're going to start with the TAM. This is a light tank from Argentina, battery rating 8.7. It's basically quite slow with bad protection. It can be a little bit trolly because it's a turret rear mounted design so an incoming shot does sometimes get eaten by the engine. We do only have the DM23 round which isn't the best anymore but at 8.7 it's a decent backup vehicle to point at its own battery rating. We then have the Big Light Panzer 57. This is an excellent vehicle. It's located at battery rating 9.3. We've got a fast firing 57mm auto cannon with four different types of ammunition. We have a solid shot APC-BC round. This is great for going through the sides of enemy tanks. We have a sap shell which has less penetration but more explosive filler. And then we also have a high explosive variable time fuse shell. This allows you to target low flying helicopters and planes and makes the Big Black Panzer in my opinion one of the best all round tanks in the game. Once you unlock the eye toe upgrade, we go from using a regular toe with 430mm of penetration to the ITO which has 200mm more, as well as having 0.75km more range. As I said, this makes the Big Light Panzer an absolute chad of a multi-role vehicle really. You can shoot down planes, helicopters, destroy tanks frontally with your ATGM, and if you manage to flank an enemy, you can light them up at the side with your fast firing 57. While I wouldn't recommend using the Big Light Panzer at 11.7, it's certainly very good at 10.3 in the new emerging 10.3 lineup. Strangely, we then have the Puma at battery rating 9.7. Despite being a higher battery rating than the Big Light Panzer, I don't see any reason that this thing is better than the previous vehicle in any way. Sure, it does have better survivability. The Puma is larger with more bulky appearance and composite screens on the side to protect you from chemical weapons. We also have a opto electrical dazzler which does prevent you being targeted by some atgms while the big light panzer has atgms on the side of the vehicle the puma does not have this instead its only armament is the 30 mm cannon granted this does fire some pretty powerful ap fsds rounds capable of penetrating 121 mm of armor but in my opinion the atgm and Fairly multi-roll 57mm of the Big Light Panzer is much better than the Puma. The complete opposite of the Puma, because this thing is an absolute giga chad, is the Radkampfwagen 90. This again is strangely a lower battery rating, despite being better in every way than the Puma. The Radkampfwagen 90 has an absolutely insane amount of acceleration, traction and top speed. It is by far the best 8x8 chassis in the game, in terms of its speed, firepower, the only thing you can criticise it on really is its lack of thermal imaging, but that isn't the end of the world to be honest. We also have the DM33 round with our 105mm gun, giving you absolutely fantastic penetration and post pen damage. Like the Big Light Panzer being battery rating 9.3, it certainly punches far above its weight, and I take this thing out all the time at battery rating 10.3, as well as 11.7. The high mobility of the vehicle makes it basically up to your proof as you can always flank an enemy and get a good kill with your DM33 from the side. We then have the TAM 2C, this is an improvement of the original TAM at 8.7. Despite going up in battery rating by 1.3, we have very little improvement in my opinion. We have the same chassis and survivability, we do get better thermal imaging, we're now up to second or third gen thermals. And we also have DM63 for our 105mm gun. While this gives the TAM 2C much better gun handling and penetration, the tank is still slower than a lot of the other light tanks we've covered so far. And while you do get new gadgets like a laser warning receiver, these things don't really help you to be honest. It's less of a light tank and more of a tank destroyer playstyle really. We also have a couple of light tanks in the event slash premium section. First of all we have the Class 3P, this was a reward vehicle or an event vehicle. It's basically a 105mm box, well it's basically a box with a 105mm gun slapped on top of it. I think it's South African, 
It's got DM33, so it does still have a very good firepower. It's just such a large vehicle in itself that you can't really hide it. It's like something Britain would make in World War II, where they just strap a gun onto a bus. That's basically what this thing is. And then finally for our light tanks, we have the TAM-2 IP, which stands for Improved Protection. It has a composite screen, a composite screen sorry, surrounding the front and side of the tank and turret. This basically gives you improved protection against chemical weapons, such as heat of fast rounds, as well as anti-tank guided missiles. This is also battery rating 8.7, like the Tech Tree, Tech Tree Tam, but this tank gets DM33. Probably the most meta 8.7 tank in the German Tech Tree is the Leopard A1A1. This thing used to be one of the best tanks in the game, but has seen a steady decline since the introduction of the large amounts of light tanks. The Leopards used to be known for being fairly mobile compared to a lot of the tanks which used to be out at that time such as the Challengers and some of the other slower T-72s. But as I said, because we now have a lot of light tanks at top tier, the mobility of the Leopards has seen a fair decline. Two vehicles which also have declined steadily since the last couple of years we have the M48 Super. This is an old M48 hull with a new modernization slapped onto it. Basically, it has a composite screen on the front of the vehicle, giving it better protection against chemical weapons. We also have a better main gun round. We have the DM33. The second vehicle is the KPZ70. This was a joint venture by the Americans and the Germans, which ended up going nowhere really. As you can see here, the driver and the commander are located directly behind each other. So one round penetrating around here is going to kill the tank instantly. Both the M48 Super and the KPZ-70, like the A1A1, they've had better days to be honest. I don't play these at all anymore. They're just a little bit sad to play. We also have a couple of leopards in the event slash premium tree. We have the C2A1, this is a Canadian modification of one of the Leopards. Like the TAM2 IP, it's basically got composite screens around the tank. Again though, we do have thermal imaging as well as a DM33 round, making it a pretty punchy tank, albeit with poor survivability and pretty mediocre mobility. We also have the old Chad, the Leopard A1A1 L44. This is probably the tank that I have got one of the most kills with. I used to play this tank all the time. It used to be the only tank in the German Tetri with thermal imaging. Anyway, we don't have the DM23 round anymore. We only have DM13, which is a little bit of a step back. This is a short rod penetrator, penetrator, I believe, sorry. This means it does pretty mediocre post pen damage, albeit having quite a large amount of penetration. And in the last update, we had a new kind of tech tree added to the German nation. This is the T-72M1. It's basically the same as the T-72A in the Soviet tech tree. So before we get on to the big boys in the rank 7, let's go over one last vehicle, which I think is an absolute giga chad and you should absolutely grind. And that is the Weasel 1A2. We can fire the TOW-2, the TOW-2A and the TOW-2B. While the TOW 2B used to be considered the best missile to use, as it is a top down attack missile, meaning you can target enemies behind cover and target the theoretical weakest point of the tank, the roof, I am now kind of leaning towards using the TOW 2A. You have to hit an enemy directly with the TOW 2A, but it's a tandem charge warhead capable of penetrating 800mm of penetration. While the TOW 2Bs are quite nice in situations, I think the TOW 2A is the go to now. You can go through pretty much any vehicle, especially at your battery rating of 9.7. I use this in my 11.7 lineup all the time. Because you've got such a high power ATGM, it is still more than capable of being useful at top tier. You can use it as a makeshift anti helicopter weapon if you really need to. And as I said, this is probably my favourite vehicle to play in the game, to be honest. It's just so small, it's such a truly vehicle. As you can see here, you can just put bushes on it and be a little gremlin. Uh, if there's one vehicle that you get in the German Tetri, I would recommend getting this one. It's so it's amazing at 9.7 and it's still incredibly good at 11.7. 
All right then lads, so let's quickly get the SBAAs out of the way before we get on to the Chads, the Leopards themselves. So at 8.0 we have the Gepard. This is quite a low battery rating obviously, but if you've ever been any sort of battery rating at top tier, you'll know just how deadly the Gepards are. They're absolutely Terminators on tracks. They do have 40 rounds of APDS rounds, the DM23. It's basically a standard APDS belt. It does go through the sides of enemy tanks pretty easily. But the Gepard is probably, again, like the Beg Like Panzer, it's just a multifunctional vehicle. You can kill helicopters, planes, and enemy tanks pretty easily. It's kind of like a mini Tunguska. We can then get the Ozolot, which is in many ways a completely different vehicle to the Gepard. It's a dedicated anti aircraft vehicle. We get an IRST, which allows you to track um, helicopters and planes without giving them a RWR warning. We do use the Stinger missiles though, which are renowned for being a little bit um, inconsistent, shall we say. The K missiles are a lot better though, because they do have a proximity fuse shell, whereas the FIM 92Es, you need to get a direct hit. This is the Gepard 1A2. This uses the same missiles as the Ocelot, the 92K Stingers, and it's basically putting them on a Gepard chassis. That's the only real difference I believe, we get like an APU or something, but it's basically just an 8.0 Gepard with stingers welded onto the side. I think there are some other differences but that is basically it. We then have the two dedicated missile a SPAAs, we have the Flarak Rad, or the Flarak Panzer sorry. This thing is fairly decent, we do have the Roland 2 and the Roland 3 missiles. I haven't really played this tank that much to be honest. I never really got it unlocked. It only has two missiles before you can fire it. It's the same for the Flarak Rad as well, our next vehicle. I can't pronounce what this thing is called. It's full name, it's German. You can ask a German speaker. I'm English, so I don't need to speak German. Anyway, compared to the Flarak Panzer, this thing has the VT-1 missiles. These differ from the Roland 3s mainly in the speed. You can see that our speed on the VT-1 is more than double the maximum velocity of the Roland 3s. This makes it incredibly good for actually killing vehicles as it gives them so little time to react to your incoming missile. We also have 59mm of explosive penetration. I wouldn't recommend using this as an anti-tank vehicle, however I guess you can against lightly armoured vehicles. But anyway, the Flarak Rad is one of the best dedicated anti-plane and anti-helicopter vehicles in the game. Just bear in mind, you have no way to secondary engage players. It's not like you have guns on the side where you can use it in a pinch against enemy tanks. It's basically the exact opposite of a Gepard 1A2. It's purely for engaging planes and helicopters. That being said though, in that role of being a pure air defense vehicle, this is one of the best in the game. Alright then lads, so we've got all that boring shite out of the way. Let's get on to the absolute chads themselves, the Leopard series of vehicles. I'm going to start with the Leopard 2K. As you can see, I spent a small fortune a few years ago and got myself the Flectan camo. This was back when the Leopard 2K and the Leopard 2A4 were the top tier of the German tech tree. And if you had this camo, then you were a cool kid. Cringe aside though, the Leopard 2K is still a fairly decent vehicle. This is basically kind of a prototype of a Leopard. It kind of has a similar turret to the Radkampfwagen 90. It's not really got any composite armor, it does have spaced armor though on the sides. This means you have no real protection from any incoming both chemical and kinetic penetrators. So the protection of the tank is very very poor. We also have a 20mm cannon here. It's fairly decent against incoming enemy helicopters, but not really that useful against enemy tanks. Again, we do have the DM23 round for the vehicle, but it's not the best, to be honest. It gets the job done. It's not as powerful as some of the like 3BM42 found on contemporary Soviet tanks. The Leopard 2K, it is a fan favourite, to be honest. Lots of people still play these. It's incredibly fast. It's at a time when the Leopards were very light giving it very good mobility. A similar vehicle to the Leopard 2K is the Leopard 2AV. I believe this was a tank that the Germans sent to America for testing 
they basically competed against it. They competed against the Abrams, I believe, or something like that. It's basically a early Leopard 2. I'm not really sure what the AV stands for. It's basically just a prototype, basically. This, like the Leopard 2K, lacks a thermal imager. We only have the NVD, but we do have DM33, giving us pretty good pen penetration. This tank also only has a 105mm gun compared to the 120L44 found on the other Leopard 2s. This was an event vehicle, so you can only get this by if you buy it on the Guardian Marketplace. If you do have a bit of money spur though, it is a pretty decent vehicle. I can't really tell you how it's going to do in the 10.3 lineup meta now, but with DM33 it kind of is still good in my opinion. We then have the OG bad boy. Again, with another Flectan camouflage, which I probably spent a small fortune on. This is the Leopard 2A4. This used to be the top tier German lineup. Well, the top tier German tank. It's got a composite armor scheme. It's kind of a weird arrangement. This thing always strikes me as very stupid having this kind of setup. I'm not an engineer though. The tank itself does have a very large frontal turret breach, really. A lot of the tank. A lot of the turret is taken up by the breach, which is a weak spot. So you do have two massive... The only real armor of the turret front is here and here. The entire middle of the tank is very, very weak. So the armor protection of the Leopard 2A4 isn't really that good. Combined with the fact that Leopards have all got weak hulls, the survivability of the Leopard 2A4 isn't very good, to be honest. Again, we still only have DM23. So it's a lot weaker gun compared to something like the Leopard 2 AV which we just looked at despite being battery rating 10.3 whereas those tanks are 9.7. Not really sure why they increased the battery rating, maybe it was for decompression but it's not really that deserved in my opinion. We then have a squadron vehicle, the, Le the Pan Leopard 2 PL sorry. This is a Polish Leopard, again it features an additional armour add-on package. It's basically a Leopard 2A4, just with this new package upgrade. So the survivability is kind of weak to be honest, it is just a Leopard 2A4 with some add-on armour. That composite add-on armour is only protecting you against chemical rounds remember. It's not really going to do anything against incoming kinetic energy penetrators which are your main rounds we'll be facing at this tier. We do have pretty decent thermal imaging though. We also have the DM43 round, which is a big upgrade over DM33, and certainly a big upgrade over DM23. We do also have a DM11 round. Not really sure why you'd ever use this. It can't really be used against anything other than hovering helicopters, really. It's, not, it's a bit of a gimmick, to be honest. But you can get yourself a free Panzer II by just playing the game in a squadron. This is still good at 11.7 to be honest. Pretty good thermal imaging, very high power round. It's quite fast as well because it's a little bit lighter than the other tanks. But still, it's a good tank. I'd highly recommend getting it. We then come on to the old bad boy, the Leopard 2A5. While it has been overshadowed a little bit by its bigger brother, the Leopard 2A6, or I guess younger brother because it's a newer design. Anyway, the Leopard 2A5 features the same L44-120 gun found on the other Leopards, except we do have better ammunition. Our stock shell is, well, our first upgradable AP FSDS round is the DM33, which to be honest is still usable at 11.7. But we also unlock the DM-53. This gives us over 600mm of penetration at basically 1000 meters. This is a huge increase in firepower for the D for the Leopard tanks. So we have a very good amount of firepower. Our protection as well is also pretty good on the turret. But the hull of the Leopards are all fairly weak. We do have composite armor here. But any round going through... If you can shoot a leopard kind of like here, it goes straight through, kills the driver and the, low, and the gunner and commander. So the leopards are pretty easy to kill, especially if you shoot them right under here. I've got my like bushes on here, kind of being a little bit cancerous player. But if you shoot them just underneath the gun, where this thing is, you can go straight through here and go 
basically knock out the loader and commander. So if you are facing a leopard from the front, shoot them directly under the gun breach here, as I said. I'll try and go through the driver's port here. I'll get onto that shortly though. And then finally, we have the Leopard 2A6. This doesn't really have anything different compared to the Leopard 2A5, apart from the longer gun. So the only thing different about this gun is it is longer. This gives the round more muzzle velocity, as it's the barrel is longer, meaning the there's more time for the powder in the charge to act upon the projectile, basically. That's why longer guns tend to have higher muzzle velocities. We've got the same DM53 round. But basically that is the only difference is the gun. We've got no new modern features, got the same thermal imaging, the same armor scheme. So let's take a look at the armor scheme of the DM, not the D, of the Leopard 2A6. We're going to get our BVM, which is the arguably the best tank in the game. It's a range of 100 meters. We can see that basically we're unable to penetrate the turret of the Leopard 2A6. With the exception of just underneath the gun here as I mentioned. If we shoot it here, it should take out the gun as well as quite a few crew members. So this shot here, it wouldn't have been a one-shot kill, but it has taken out our gunner and commander. Sometimes you can kill all three crew members in the turret by shooting just under here. You can also shoot the tank just here, as I said earlier, and it should take out the driver, gunner and commander. So if you are trying to take out a leopard from the front, just underneath the gun and the driver's hatch right here. Alright, when we then move on to helicopters as one of our cast options. And I have the BO-105. This thing is pretty good in a 9.3 lineup. This is the old premium and you probably won't be able to get this anymore. We do also have two Tetri BO-105s though. In my other lineups at 10.3, I usually do take along the other premium which I have is the MI-24P. It's pretty good though. You can take out eight Sturms, I believe. So this is quite a good lineup, or quite a good takeout. Eight very, very potent anti-tank missiles. I usually run the two rocket pods, so the S8 KOs, six Sturms, and then two R16 missiles. You also have a Tektri Mi-24P. Again, this is just a copy and paste, as the pre well, the premium is a copy and paste of this. You have the exact same loadouts available to you. For top tier, though, we do have the Tiger UHT. This is fairly unique as it has fire and forget missiles. The PARS missiles, they have quite a lot of penetration, 1000 millimeters. They are fire and forget as they use infrared guidance. The only downside of that is after you fire them, you obviously cannot guide them onto a target after launch, which means you can kind of get lost on their way to the target and they are easily defeated by players popping smoke. We then have the question of Cass, and this is an area where Germany is fairly famous for being quite weak. That did change in the last update, we did get the Tornado IDS. This is the only plane that I know in the German tech tree that gets basically dedicated air to ground weapons. You can see here we do have a T-Pod with our GBU 16s and does it get any? It does get the GBU 24s as well. We do have a few other options. So with stuff like the MiG-23s, we can take along the S-24 rockets. These are all, the fairly potent air to ground rockets, but they aren't guided. You do have to get very close to the battlefield in order to shoot them, which does make you a very easy target for enemy SPAA. Basically, Germany has a very good tank lineup, but has very poor cast in my opinion. So apart from the Tornado and the G-91, in terms of cast, the German nation does suffer quite a lot. Alright, so let's quickly go over some of my favourite lineups for the German tech tree. As I said, there may be an emerging 8.7 in the future. I haven't had time to play that though properly. So I'm just going to go over my three main German uh, lineups. The first is 9.3. For the cast, we've got the BO-105 and the G91 with the Erteground Nords. We then have our Radkampfwagen 90. This isn't going to be your first spawn. However, it could be used as a first spawn. Also have the Beglite Panzer. I also run the KPZ-70 and the C2A1, as well as the A1A1. These two tanks though are quite rare. They're event vehicles or premium vehicles. The 9.3 German lineup, it's not the best to be honest. 
much better in my opinion is the 10.3 lineup. Again though, my lineup consists quite a lot of event vehicles. As you can see here, we do have the 2AV. We also have the premium Panzer Battalion 123. We do have the Tetri 2A4. We have the Radkampf Wagon and the Puma, as well as the Beg Light. So the Radkampf and the Beg Light, again, very, very useful. I use these at top tier all the time. More the Radkampf Wagon though, to be honest. In terms of cars, you can use the Mi-24Ps. It's kind of whatever you want, really. At 10.3, though, we don't have any good jets, really, in my opinion. You can maybe use one of the MiGs and fire your S-24s. There's no dedicated earth ground plane at 10.3. Maybe the MiG-23BN, but that still only has dumb fire bombs. Maybe it has KH-23s. So, 10.3 lineup, very good ground, but very bad cast. And then finally, we have our top, top tier. You basically know what I'm going to be using here. We've got the Leopard 2A4s, uh, Leopard 2A6s, sorry, bloody hell, I can't read. I usually take backups on these vehicles because these are your main heavy hitters. Also have the Weasel, very, very good tank, as well as our Radkampf wagon. For cast, we have the Tiger, as well as the Tornado, both fantastic cast vehicles. And then finally, we have the Flarak Rad as our dedicated anti-aircraft vehicle. Overall, Germany is one of the top three nations in War Thunder and arguably one of the best. It's probably the easiest nation to play, in my opinion. And while at 11.7, it kind of does get dominated by the Soviets, at 10.3, I think the Germans are the best tech tree in the game, really. So if you're getting clobbered at top tier in the German nation, try playing at 10.3 and you should have a better time. Anyway, lads, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do consider leaving a like and subscribing, and I'll see you in the next one.